Beltone Hearing Aid Center presents The Drive. Ready, fight! The Drive. Elmore deep, left side three, it's good! From 30 feet, John Elmore! The Drive with Paul Swan. Welcome into the Tuesday, December 4th edition. The Drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Coming up this hour, we're going to hear from Chase Hancock. We're also going to hear from Ryan B. We'll throw a little Jordan Dowry as well as I had a chance to catch up with those guys. Thundering Herd getting ready for South Florida. And the Thundering Herd already, um, the line looks like this. South Florida is a two-point favorite over the Thundering Herd. Now, that line's going to change. Now, if you believe the line, South Florida, they've, they're going to win this. But you believe ESPN. ESPN, uh, here's their early prediction. Here's what um, they pretty much said, and it was pretty kind towards the Thundering Herd, actually. Now, again, South Florida's a pretty good opponent, I think, but what ESPN said was, USF is at home and boasts superior athletic talent. But this Bulls team has been thoroughly unimpressive, dropping its last five regular season games after an inflated start. Marshall has a talented defense that will cause enough trouble for USF and get a big game from wide receiver Tyree Brady and other native Floridians in the return to familiar ground. Prediction Marshall 38, South Florida 30. Again, this is early. But the worldwide leader is behind you. So what can go wrong if you've got the worldwide leader supporting you? So we'll talk about that later. We've got uh, some guys to get to here in a few minutes. We've also got basketball to get into as Marshall's got Duquesne tomorrow trying to figure out what went wrong against Ohio and correct that. So we're going to get into that. Also, we'll talk later on about Urban Meyer. Guess what? Ohio State, they're, they're going to come back down to earth, I think, because Urban was the reason why Ohio State, in my mind, was where they were. I think they come back down to the pack a little bit, and the Big Ten all of a sudden is a wide-open race. So we've got that to get into. And your phone calls at 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. Now, Conference USA today releasing their all-freshman team and their all-conference teams. And Marshall's got three members of the freshman team. Isaiah Green makes the list. Uh, Darius Hodge makes the list, and Stephen Gilmore. Now, Green, he is credited on the list for the 2,238 yards and 15 touchdowns. He was able to amass ranking fourth in Conference USA with an average of 248.7 yards per game. Hodge posted 10 tackles, and Gilmore had 17 stops and a pass breakup as reserves on the Thundering Herd defense. So the Thundering Herd lands a few on the freshman team. Now, there's the all-conference teams. And now, Thundering Herd's well-represented. Now, not dominant, but I think well-represented. At least they've got several names on the board. If you look at it just from a school breakdown, first team, you're going to see a lot of guys from Middle Tennessee. You're going to see a lot of guys from UAB. It goes like this. Here's the first team. I'll just go in order. You've got Stockstill from Middle Tennessee as your quarterback. Devin Singletary and Spencer Brown are your running backs from FAU and UAB, respectively. Uh, Offensive linemen, you've got Reggie Bain from Florida Atlantic. O'Shea Dugas from Louisiana Tech. Levi Brown is on the list from Marshall. Chandler Brewer, senior from Middle Tennessee. Justice Powers, senior from UAB. Tight end, Harrison Bryant, Jr. from Florida Atlantic. And then Tyree Brady, of course, is on the list. You've got Rico Busey, Jr. and uh, Quez Watkins from Southern Miss. And Busey, Jr. is from North Texas. So that's what your offensive all-conference first team looks like. Defensively, you got one guy from Marshall. That's Malik Gant. And Malik Gant belongs on this list. But... That's it as far as first-teamers on the defense. And then, of course, Matt Beardall, he is on the list. So, you've got Levi Brown, Junior Marshall, 
Tyree Brady, senior, Marshall. And you've got Malik Gant, junior, Marshall, all on the list as far as your offense and defense. And, of course, you got one half of the Beardall Bowl, Matt Beardall, junior, Marshall, on the list. Uh, defensively, some of the other uh, kids, uh, Alex uh, Highsmith, uh, Charlotte, Jalen Ferguson, Louisiana Tech, Ladarius Hamilton, North Texas, uh, Southern Miss, Middle Tennessee, North Texas is going down the list. But those are the names that you're most in, wanting to know about who made it for Marshall. Now going down the list as well, second team defense is where you see some representation from the Thundering Herd on the second team. Ryan B., your senior for Marshall, Ty Tyler, your redshirt junior for Marshall, Chris Jackson, your junior for Marshall, all making the list on defense. Um, nobody's second team on special teams. Honorable mention. So I took my highlighter and just started going down the list. Every time I would see a Marshall player, I would stop, and it had to go away until I found uh, Armani Levias. He is on the honorable mention list. Also, Marcel Williams on the honorable mention list on the offensive side. I don't think I missed anyone there. On the defensive side, had to go down away as well. A lot of kids from Middle Tennessee, Louisiana Tech. I keep going and keep going. And then I found Chase Hancock, who we're going to hear from here in a few minutes. Now, I talked to Chase before this came out, so we don't have anything from Chase about this. Uh, special teams, the list is bare of Thundering Herd players. So that's what it looks like as far as your all-conference team and your all-freshman team. Thundering Herd has a chance now to go out, play South Florida, get a win, keep Doc undefeated in bowls, feel good about the offseason. Because really, unless it's a conference championship, the only thing you remember is, if it's a bad year or what was Marshall's last game? If it's a bad year, you don't go to a bowl. You, you remember that. If Marshall does okay, gets into a bowl, wins the bowl, it seems like almost everything is forgiven. All is well because you won your bowl. So in review, East Division Championship, you remember that. Conference USA Championship, you remember that. Bad season. Win your bowl. Like, that's the marker. In that order. Actually, you probably remember bad season more because you're mad about it. Bad season, Conference East Division Championships, the bowl. In my humble opinion, which Thundering Herd... Even though the line is minus two for South Florida, ESPN thinks the herd wins. We're going to hear from some of the guys when we continue. We've got Ryan B. coming up first. I'm going to get his thoughts on playing this game. And we'll hear from Chase Hancock later, Jordan Dowry. We'll talk a little bit more about the sports of the day. Urban Myers is leaving, retiring. Ohio State's going to become mortal again. I don't know. Can they keep turning that around? Can they keep just making it? Like a machine? We'll see. We'll get into that as well when we continue with this edition of The Drive presented by Beltone Hearing Aid Center on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. You're listening to The Drive with Paul Swan presented by Beltone Hearing Aid Center on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. So to come, we're going to hear from Chase Hancock and Jordan Dow where he gets their thoughts on the upcoming game between Marshall and South Florida. Plus, we'll take your phone calls at 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Welcome back to The Drive, presented by Belltone Hearing Aid Center. Today, I got a chance to catch up with Ryan B. earlier at Joan C. Edwards Stadium. I'm going to get a kind of a, a breakdown from him, what's coming up for him, how does it feel, all that good stuff. You know how we go with this. But uh, the first thing I really wanted to ask him about was uh, just get his thoughts, his impressions of playing in Florida. So here's what he had to say. Yeah, that's a topic of conversation. But, uh, you know, we're all excited for it. When we found out it was in Tampa, we were all uh, just pumped for it, you know, just for so many reasons. Um you know, just being in Florida, everybody loves Florida. Um, you know, 
for me personally, um, you know, my dad's house is like 20 minutes from from Raymond James, so I'm excited about that. Um, my brother uh, is actually he's up he's been up at Fort Drump in uh, New York in the Army for months now. I can't remember the last time I've seen him. He's actually he gets to Tampa the 20th, so he'll be able to make it to the game. Um, you know, Coach Cronin, coaches for USF. Um, there's so many reasons we're excited for it. Now, you heard him mention about his dad. Dad's in Alaska. So we wanted to kind of get more info on that deal. So here's Ryan talking about his dad. He's in Alaska, and he's coming to the game. He's actually up in Alaska right now, so he was kind of blowing up my phone uh, on Sunday. You know, where are we going? Where are we going? I was like, I don't know. I'll let you know what I know. But uh, when we finally got the message that we were going to Tampa, they were they were all excited down there. So, you know, I'm really excited uh, that they'll all be able to make it. You know, my brother gets in. That, that wasn't even planned. You know, he was already just planning on going down there for Christmas. And uh, like I said, he gets in on the 18th, so he'll make the game. And then my sister and I are going to stay down there after the game. So uh, we're definitely looking forward to it. Now, with the opportunity to play another game, a lot of programs don't. This is an opportunity to get a win. The fans are going to be happy. They're going to remember this bowl game. It's an opportunity for, honestly, the Thundering Herd to finish the season right. Yeah, you know, um, anything, like I said last week, you know, anytime you get a, another chance to go out and play, you know, it's it's great. Um, you know, they're winding down. This will be my last one. Uh at Marshall, and I'm, I'm excited for it and uh, look to go out the right way. We're at the point now where this is it for a lot of the guys. For Ryan B., this is it. These are going to be the last days, last weeks he practices, last time he's with this group of, of guys. This might be the last time he sees a lot of these guys until maybe a reunion. But this collection of guys won't be together much longer. It'll be a different team next year, a different collection of guys. Some guys will be familiar. Some won't be with new kids coming in. And Ryan B. won't be there. He won't be at practice. So he was asked, has it hit him yet that this is it? This is the last go-around. It's it's kind of slowly hitting me. You know, I don't think it'll really uh, hit me until – until uh, the game's over, but, you know, I'm just kind of taking it all in, enjoying it while I have it. Now I want to get Ryan's thoughts on playing South Florida. They're an American conference team. It's in Florida. There's an opportunity to um, go down there and get the win over a team that pretty much has home field advantage. And I just want to get his thoughts on playing South Florida. We were excited for it. Um uh, I think USF is a good, uh, good competition. You know, they're they're a great team. Um, haven't got a chance to to watch much film yet, but you know, just catching glimpses of the game earlier. You know, they're they're uh, they're a solid offense. So uh, you know, it's just going to be another challenge this week. Now, one question I had for Ryan when I was talking to him just kind of give me a feeling of what's the excitement like. A lot of guys they're going home. They're playing in Florida. They're playing against the Florida school. So what's the excitement like going down and playing in Florida? The majority of our team is probably from Florida. So uh, there's that excitement. And then, you know, well, Matthew Beardall, his brother, plays for USF. So, uh, you know, I know he's he's excited about that. And um, I'm definitely looking forward to it, too, too. The Beardall Bowl. I'm telling you, the Beardall Bowl. That's what we're going to start calling it by. Now, drilling down a little bit, getting into the, the game itself, One question that was asked of Ryan was just the importance of these last few days, these last few weeks of practice. Because if you go back, you look at that Virginia Tech game, there were a lot of opportunities missed. There were a lot of mistakes on the Thundering Herd's part. And so how important is it these last few weeks just to to get it all in, eliminate those mistakes, and just make those corrections? Oh, it's it's very important. You know, we can't – we can't think it's over. You know, we've got another game, and uh, we got to take it just as serious as we have the last 12. So, uh, um, you know, we got a couple of days off now to uh, kind of recoup from the season, long season, and uh, get whatever bumps and bruises we have uh, worked out. And then um, we'll start practice uh, probably Thursday and uh, just kind of um, iron out those wrinkles that, that kind of crept up on us uh, the last few weeks. So, um, you know, we're looking forward to get back to work. 
Another question that was asked of Ryan was just being self-aware, knowing that you've got a limited amount of practices. This is it. After this, the game, it's over. So with that in mind, are you going harder? Are the seniors going harder because they know this is it? This is their last go around? Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, I said it earlier, I'm just taking everything in and enjoying it while I have it because, you know, it's it's winding down whether we like it or not. And, uh, so, you know, I'm uh, just going to work like I have the past 12 weeks. You know, um, some of these bowl practices, uh, at the end of them, the young guys will get in and do do some drills um, to get them some work, you know, kind of a early spring practice for them. So, uh, you know, I'll be um, working with them, helping them, uh, just coaching them all I can. And that's another thing. That's the importance of these bowl games for all these programs. I remember having this conversation a few years ago. You know why Marshall was so good back in the day? Not only was the fact that they had a lot of great talent, a lot of repetition. They had opportunities to practice. Marshall in the 1AA days, playing in the playoffs every year, they had multiple games. So they were able to keep going and going and get those repetition and get these guys in, practice. Same thing going on here now at the bowl. So you have an opportunity. If you don't get to a bowl, that says something about your program. For one, you're not in a good spot. And two, you miss out on all this extra practice time. Now, Ryan, of course, he's a fun guy. We got a chance to, to talk to him over the years and this season especially, just hang out with him. And he's a guy with a personality. So we had to ask him about playing in what is probably one of the better-named bowls. Say what you will about some of the bowls. The names, location might be great, names not so much. Hey, you're playing in the Bad Boy Mowers Bowl. I've already been talking with Will Almer, you know, the <laughs> whole drive your tractor to school day thing uh, a couple weeks ago. Was, um, it's kind of crazy how it worked out. So uh, I've heard there's there's a lawnmower race, so we're yeah. definitely looking forward to that. So you know what his mind's on? His mind is on the Bad Boy Mowers, the lawnmower race, and... We had to follow up about that mower race to see uh, where his head's at on that. That was actually one of my summer jobs a couple of years ago. My One of my best friends in high school has his own lawn care company, and he's got like the zero turns like that. So uh, I hope I get, I'm the one that gets the race, <laughs> needless <laughs> to say. <laughs> so he wants the race. I don't know if Doc's going to sit there and go, yeah, you know, let's, um, let's take it easy on the, on the mower here. But you got to admit, one of the better named bowls, the Bad Boy Mowers Gasparilla Bowl. It's got a pretty good logo, too. I mean, if you're going to play in a bowl, you might as well have one that you can sit there with a straight face and, and smile at the same time going, yeah, we got a good one. How would you like to play in a Cheez-It Bowl? Really, think about it. Cheez-It Bowl, is that the bowl you want to go for? No. Potato Bowl? No. We need to talk about these bold names. We might do that when we come back. We'll also hear from Chase Hancock and Jordan Dowry, get their thoughts on the upcoming game with South Florida. Your phone calls also on the way when we continue with this edition of The Drive. We are presented by Beltone Hearing Aid Center on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 listening to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We're presented by Beltone Hearing Aid Center on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. I'm your host. Glad you're with me. So to come, we're going to hear from Jordan Dowry, but I've got Chase Hancock for you. Uh, It's always fun on Tuesdays. Mondays are great. I get to talk to a lot of guys, but... um, Tuesdays are Chase Hancock and Ryan B. Day. It's always uh, cool just to sit back, talk to those guys. You don't feel it's rushed because it's just a few of us there to talk to them, and it's them, nobody else. And so it's like a more relaxed atmosphere. And, of course, if you know Chase Hancock, I mean, he comes in, he just, he's just chill. He's, he's Chase Hancock. And – I wanted to find out what that chill demeanor is like when you find out 
where you're going and who you're going to play. So uh, here's Chase Hancock. He's explaining what it was like when he found out the opponent and the location. I mean, anytime we can get a bowl, I think I think that's a blessing because, I mean, um, the 3 and nine season, you know, we didn't go anywhere. So, um, you know, um, I figured they were probably going to end up in Florida. Um, and then to find out who we were playing, I think they're a really good team. Um, so I'm excited to play them. And what I've seen on film is, you know, they're really, really shifty guys. Um, um, they got some breakaway speed. The linemen, they do a good job. The O-line does a good job of opening up hole, like opening up, you know, the gaps. I mean, trucks can drive through them. So I think that's going to be a great challenge for us as a defense. I like that Chase goes from, yeah, here's how I'm feeling and, and then he starts breaking it down for us. Give me a little idea of what this team's about. Now, one thing we wanted to ask him about was, and I threw it out there, hey, um, how's this feel? How's it How's it going right now, knowing that this is the last go-around for you? And here's what he had to say. Yeah, um, my time's running out. You know, hopefully, you know, I've left my, my mark here at Marshall. I've, I've, you know, I feel like I've, I've – I feel like I, I've made my mark here at Marshall, and I hope that somebody else can look up to me and use me as an example to say, okay, this is how he did it. Um, you know, maybe I can do it too. Just just to inspire somebody else because I came as a walk-on. I mean, we know my story. It's a, it's a, it's a blessing. Um, I mean, maybe that will inspire somebody else to be able to say, you know, well, he did it. You know, I can do it. Except for them, I want them to do it better. I don't want them to do it like me. Don't don't be like me. Be better than me. Um, so, you know, as my time runs out, I just hope that I can leave the younger guys with something that they can pass on and, you know, just, just keep the keep the ball rolling. You know, and they pass it on and it just keeps going. Um, I've enjoyed my time here at Marshall and – I'm just blessed that we get to get a bowl game, you know, so, yeah. I want to go down that thread a little bit more with him. And I asked him, is your legacy the thing that you are proud of the most? And here's what he had to say. I mean, I hope I would hope that you would still talk about me. I mean, that's, that's why we play the game. We want to be great. We want to be the best of the best. Um but I mean, I looked up to to guys like DJ Hunter, Evan McKelvey, um, Neville Hewitt, uh, those guys. Um, you know, so they they taught me things, and then I kind of took that, and I've kind of tried to pass that down. You know, to Yuli and um, you know, Moody, well, Moody when he got when he first got here. Um, I, I think that's that's how it goes. I think you're supposed to. It's your job to make sure that you pass what you've learned on to the next to the next the next incoming group and I think that's what makes teams great now another question that was asked is this how hard are the seniors going to go knowing that they've only got a few practices left and here's Chase's response um I think it's important I mean especially after last game you fell short so there's not even if we would have won the game I don't think that we would be lax, um, but I think that it's it's very important that we end on a win. You know, for the for the 2018 season. You know, this is when people talk about Marshall in 2018. What will they say? So I think it's important that we go out on a on a good note. Of course, he's talking about that Virginia Tech game. It doesn't matter if the Thundering Herd won it or not. That. They got to go out on a good note. How do you go out on a good note? You win your bowl game, and he's right. We talked about it earlier. If Marshall wins the bowl game, then I'm not saying all is ever forgiven because there are going to be reasons why for some of you that this was just a horrible season, it went wrong, or it didn't live up to your expectation. And for others, you're going to be pretty happy. Hey, uh, Marshall got a lot of wins. Got to go to a bowl game, won the bowl game. It's going to be good for you. Now, Jordan Dowry, been talking to him all year and caught up with him yesterday. And I wanted to save him for today just so we could uh, talk a little bit more about what he had to say and his thoughts. Jordan, if you ask him a question, he's pretty much going to give you 
a very insightful breakdown. And I wanted to know about what's going on with him right now. What's he thinking, knowing that this is the last game for him? It's 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 weird because I, I I'm I've never not been on a football team. I've never had that experience. So it's uh it's going to be weird. It doesn't feel like the end um, in a lot of ways. It just it's still business as usual. Still practicing, getting ready with the guys. All it, it doesn't feel that different yet. And uh, I think it's going to be one of those things that's going to really hit me when when I don't have practice to go to and that sort of thing. But right now, it's, it just still feels normal, so it's uh, it's going to sneak up on me. And something we've been talking about with these guys over the couple of days we've had them was just the importance of this game itself. You want to go out on the right note. You want to go out winning a bowl game. And people are, of course, going to remember that more than anything. But you're going to end the season – not on a sour note, what's the importance of this game? Here's Jordan Dowry. I think every game we prepare for, it's at the end of the day, it's because we, we, we play as hard as we do because we're competitive and that's just who we are. Um, and I think the bowl game and all the other stuff, we're, you put us against anybody, any game, wherever you – if you line us up, we're going to play hard because that's just what we, what we do. Um, but when you have a bowl game, it's the last game of a season. It is – the jumping off point for the for the whole off season and you want to do that with a win you want to start off the off season on a high note and have something to build on um it, it's it's better to go into the whole off season with a good taste in your mouth because a loss will stick with you for a while and you don't have another opportunity to go go and fix that um so i think that puts a little bit of pressure on the end of the at the end of the season like this end on a win end on a high note so we can hit the off season ready to go Football's funny like that. This is the only sport in which a lot of people finish the season happy. You look at any other sport, everyone's going to end on a loss except the group of teams that don't make the postseason and the team that is undefeated in postseason when it's over. As far as NCAA tournament, if you don't get into the tournament and your last game was a win, you're still going to end on a sour note because you didn't get in. And then all those tournament teams that get in and lost, and then there's only the one team that remains. Same thing with all the other sports and playoffs. Football is kind of a different beast because Marshall loses to Virginia Tech. It wasn't pretty. And now they're going to go to a bowl game. And they're going to go to a bowl game and possibly win and then start the offseason off right, as Jordan said. Fans are going to remember the bowl game probably more than the Virginia Tech loss. And they're going to feel good about Marshall football. Hoisting that bowl trophy. Here it is. We're the Gasparilla Bowl champions. And so you're going to feel good about yourself. And that's the importance of, of the game itself. And they're playing, I think, it's going to be a tough opponent for them. I like the matchup. Marshall's taking on South Florida. Here's Jordan talking about South Florida. I've seen the record and the record, the way it happened. Um, they're, they're seven and five, but seven straight wins means that they must have some pieces in place. And, and that, and I don't know anything about their personnel, their scheme, or anything that they do, but you can't win seven games straight against some good opponents in there. Um, and not have some good athletes, some so a good team, um, because do that seven weeks in a row. That's that kind of consistency is really hard to do. Um, and so they've. What, I don't know what happened, what changed, um, and what, I know they've played some good teams in the last couple of weeks here. Um, but I, I've got no reason to believe that they're not a, a solid team that's going to come out and play really well. Let's go back to ESPN's prediction of the game. USF is at home. Both superior athletic talent, but this Bulls team has been thoroughly unimpressive, dropping its last five regular season games after an inflated start. So, Jordan's saying all the right things. ESPN's uh, saying it a little bit differently. Hey, uh, yeah, that that start wasn't that impressive. But Jordan's um, he's a football player. He sees things we don't. And as members of the media, we kind of sometimes see things they don't. Now, 
one question I wanted to ask of him, and some of this was inspired because to, I think sometimes the detriment of fandom, there are voices that are just not happy with anything. Some of it's fair, some of it's not. And the bowl system is pretty much supposed to be a reward. That's that's what we've been taught since we were children. We were taught how to tie our shoes, how to say please, thank you, excuse me, you're welcome. And bowl games are rewards for kids who play football. That's no Gabriel, that that didn't ha- that didn't happen in your household? Okay. At least that's my understanding of it. You got the little junior readers for football players. Bowl games are rewards. That's what the coaches tell you. And the kids get a kick out of this stuff. They really do. I'm not a big bowl guy when it comes to the fact that there's 500 million of them and several matchups. I'm just like, ah, yeah. all right, I'll watch it. I don't want to, but I'll watch it. Unless there's something else on that's better, then I'll watch that. But at the end of the day, I mean, who am I to say, hey, Jordan, man, you're playing South Florida. I'm not that interested in it. Man, this, this is it's terrible. It's terrible. Who am I to tell that kid, hey, you know what? Don't have fun. I mean, because I don't like the matchup, so why should you go out there and enjoy yourself? That's kind of what I hear sometimes when some of the fans – Speak out. And I'm not saying this is Marshall fans, but there have been some fans speaking out on certain schools' bowl selection, not pleased with it. And ultimately, at the end of the day, yeah, all the games are mediocre up until a certain point. I totally get that. But if you drill it down, why? Why are you disappointed if the kid's not? Right? Why are you disappointed? Are you disappointed because you don't get to go to a, a, a great location? Is that what it is? You don't get to go see your favorite team play a different big tank, big time team? Or are you just upset that, oh, man, you know, got to go here, to go watch them. I don't want to go here. Don't go. So... I saw some of that, just fans not happy. fact that if you won a couple more games, maybe you'd be playing for, I don't know, one of the, one of the holiday bowls, one of the committee bowls, one of the big bowls, one of the uh, college football playoff committee bowls. You know, one of the big bowls. If you win a couple of games, maybe you get into a championship game, and then all of a sudden you win that championship game, you get a bigger bowl, right? Possibility? Instead, you get a lesser to your bowl, as if that makes you a lesser of a person. Sometimes I think fans just go a little too far. If you don't like the bowl selection, okay. Don't tell the kids that. Hey, you know, man, you, you ruined my day. You ruined my day because you lost this game, and now I got to go to this bowl. As if the bowl is for you. No, it's for the kids. And that's something over the years that I have come to accept that as much as, again, I am not a big fan of the bowls as they are. At the end of the day, man, if Jordan Dowry goes to a bowl game and gets to go hang out, play in a football stadium maybe he's never played in before, big-time venue, great location, family's going to get to see him, he's excited, he's going to get a swag bag. Uh, he's going to have a good time with his, um, his his brothers playing this final game. I don't care where the game's at, as long as those kids are happy. And I, I just kind of wanted to get that from Jordan. This is the reason why for this question. Sorry it took so long to set this up, but I just want to explain why I asked this. Is it the game or is it the opponent that's more important to a football player? We were going to be happy no matter who we played um, because it's another opportunity to go out on the field. And, and the the big thing on the, for the players is, is it before or after Christmas? 
who who we're playing or where we're going for us is it's 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 another football game. Once you're on the field, you're on the field. It's it's all the same. Um, it's just a matter of who you're lining up against. So I think for us, it's uh, the, the, what bowl you go to and who you play against is kind of secondary to the game itself. And so for us, it's a uh, it, it's it's a win-win no matter what where we're going, what, who we're playing. It's it's just fun to play another game. So that was the reason why I asked that question. Now, the question was asked a lot yesterday by our very own Bill Cornwell about Doc Holliday. The fact he's undefeated in bowls. Yesterday we learned he's like a wizard. And so we wanted to find out from Jordan Dowry just what is Doc's magic formula on winning bowl games? I, I, I don't know if there's a magic formula. I just think that when we have an opportunity to prepare um, for as long as we're going to have, we're going to put a lot of time and effort and, and work into learning this team inside and out, getting time to get our bodies recovered as well as we can. Um, and I think we, we, we've got a lot of really good athletes on this team, and when they're fresh and feeling good, we play really well. And I think we, we have an opportunity to get our legs back, get feeling good, and still have really good understanding of the opponent. And when all that comes together, um, I think we play really hard and it, uh, it works out for us well. And finally, from Jordan, he was asked if, if he could just maybe put into uh, perspective uh, what this season's been like. And so here's Jordan Dowry's take on this season. I think uh, overall it, it was disappointing because we lost games that we shouldn't have. Um, I, I, think, I think that in every game, if we had, if we had executed the way we could um, – then, then we would have we would be we would have been playing a different game um, last Saturday. So that's uh, that's frustrating as a player because to know what we're capable of and to fall short of that um, it is, I mean, that, that's a that's a loss. That's that's us not taking care of business the way we wanted to. But at the same time, it's been a fun year. It's it's flown by. Uh, just having fun doing doing this stuff with the guys that I've played with for the last uh, five years. It's uh it's been fun, and at the end of the day, that's the that's the stuff that's I, I don't remember. I probably remember two or three scores from the whole season, but I remember all kinds of stuff that I did with the guys this season. So, to me, that's the that's the kind of stuff that makes us fun. And that's Jordan Dowry. Been a pleasure covering him and talking to him all season long, and that's uh, one of the uh, benefits of this job. Sometimes uh, you get a chance to, to meet these young men and talk to them, and really get to uh, find out more about them, tell their story sometimes. So real pleasure to talk to these guys all season long. When we come back, we're going to wrap this one up. It is The Drive presented by Belltone Hearing Aid Center on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Now, back to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the Tuesday, December 4th edition. The Drive is presented by Belltone Hearing Aid Center. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Our producer, Gabriel Sellers. We won't be here tomorrow at the normal time, but we'll be here at 5.30. We've got college basketball action tomorrow. It's going to be the Thundering Herd taking on Duquesne. We'll go on the air with our coverage of the game. It will begin at 5.30 with Belltone Hearing Aid Center College Basketball today. And then we will have Steve Cotton coming to you live from the A.J. Palumbo Center as the Thundering Herd at 5-2 and two look to rebound after losing against Ohio against 4-2 and two Duquesne. John Elmore right now third most in program history with 2,038 points. Would like to add to those totals. C.J. Burks, I'll say this for him. He's the guy right now. He has scored 10 points or more in all games this year for the Thundering Herd. Thundering Herd, believe it or not, uh, is only 1-2 and two on the road, though. Just a, another fun fact. They're 1-2 and two on the road. That lone win coming against Eastern Kentucky, 4-0 at home. So they got to find a way to get this one, start getting that road record back to a winning mark. That's going to do it for this edition. Again, I want to thank our producer, Gabriel Sellards. I'm Paul Swan. Back tomorrow, 530 for Belltone Hearing Aid Center College Basketball Today. 
We'll preview the game between Marshall and Duquesne and take a look at what's happening across college basketball. Don't forget, if you missed any part of the show, missed any segment, you just want to go back and listen to it again. All you have to do is find us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio. We're on TuneIn. We're on Spotify. We're on Anchor, wherever you get your podcast. And don't forget, you can give me a follow as well, The Drive with Paul Swan on Facebook, also at Paul Swan on Twitter. Enjoy the rest of your evening, everyone. Good night. Huntington, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Huntington Sports Station.